These are the four horsemen of the apocalypse. And I will tell you who they really are. And that together with the beast with the seven heads, it's all related to that place in the Alps. What John tried to warn us for in his revelations from the Bible. I watch this guy here. This is the first one on the white horse with the crown here. And it's the second one with the big sword. And it's the third one with the scales here. And this one is death. And uh, remember the skull and bones, the symbol of death, the Freemasons. I'll come back to that later. And here you can see the sun god, the pharaoh, on the, on the white horse, the first one, the first seal, of whom the guys with the, with the crown, the kings and queens, the aristocracy came from, and who became finally Freemasonry. So this country from the Alps, where you never hear from because they keep a low profile, behind their clean and innocent neutrality swindle, the richest country in the world, the most expensive, where all the gold and other fortunes lie, and yet, miraculously, never gets involved in any war. Not the Second World War, not the First World War, and not even the worst of all, the Thirty Year War from 1618 to 1648. And deception is the biggest weapon of evil. But this center of all evil finances all wars, and they have a fifth column of Swiss sleeper agents in all countries of the world, which I've already proven to you in my other films. John was right, and I've come to tell you more about it. I'm a humble man, with long grey hair, walking on sandals, and no one knows who I really am, as I haven't had any ID since 1981, that's 33 years now. And I move like a thief in the night, not to be seen by the Swiss knights of terror and their lies. So here it says, white horse and a crown. So the first horse is a white one, as the Swiss cross is. And the crown was given to him, and he went out conquering and to conquer. Now who's having a crown here? Yes, the king is having a crown. So... The first horseman is the nobility, who came from the pharaohs and finally became the last horseman called Death, therefore portraying the skull of death of the masons as in skull and bones and pale is the, is the colour of the bones, for a skeleton is not really white, neither the skin colour of a corpse, because the horses themselves symbolise the body or organ, as in organization. And here it says, Virtus jung sit mors non separabit, which means, whom virtue unites, death will not separate. So this is a death cult, just like the fourth horseman. This is death, and they have all the power. As I told you before, <coughs> the pharaohs became the aristocracy, and the aristocracy, the old world order, the feudal old world order and the aristocracy became the um, the new world order through Freemasonry. And this is the fourth horseman, death. The last one, as it is, uh, as it has been written, but it's not really the last one. Well, it says the fourth horse and the fourth rider, it's called death, the Freemasons. And the colour white is indeed Pharaoh's colour of the aristocracy, as they can afford themselves to wear white, as they don't work and get their clothes dirty. And he went out conquering and to conquer, meaning that the fair aristocracy is all over, everywhere, and rule the entire world. Well, you can see those Pharaohs all in white, see? Well, who else could afford himself or herself this? Yeah. Gets dirty, doesn't it? Well, that's why it's the white horse. That's the aristocracy. So here it says, a red horse. This is the second horse and was given a big sword. And it will take all the peace from the earth. So the second horse was red. 
the colour of our blood abundantly spilled over the earth. It was granted to take peace from the earth, and that man would slay one another, and a great sword was given to him. This is Octogon of the Templars, who also came out of the aristocracy, sort of being a union between the church and the nobility. I already explained it to you. And in 1291, two and a half months, months after the Crusades, their base was born out of the first two colors, white and red, leading to the biggest wars of all, mass slaughter and compulsory military service. That's why this horseman has the biggest sword of all, with the color red. I mean, it even says, the Brotherhood of 1291. This is on a Swiss website. You know, they, they, they got loads of these things here, you know. And here it says Widerstand, it means resistance. So they're in a war, but they're not telling us, you know, they're smiling to the world, but at the same time, they're waging a war against us. And as we are a farmed race, it was meant for real masculinity to die out in the Horus Matrix. Followed up by professional armies of mostly them, having that easy task with their worldwide Templars Octagon police force to police humanity where there's no more threat of masculinity to rise up. They've all died on the battlefields. This is why masculinity gets knocked out for even the slightest signs of resistance or potential resistance even. Whereas this worldwide army are allowed to kill and murder worldwide and especially in octogon in the alps eugenics is widespread where it's not even allowed to think differently then the third horseman on a black horse holding a pair of scales for business and to find the weight and consequent consequent price of commodities its value and current exchange rate a quart of wheat for a denarius and three quarts of barley for a denarius. And do not damage the oil and the wine. And these are the banks from Switzerland founded by the previous horsemen of the Templars through which even more control over humanity can be exerted, creating wars and famine where needed and under the color black as in the night as the workings of financial crimes are the most invisible of all and this instrument of control over mankind impossible to see and detect like a black horse running in the middle of the night. Just think of how the Swiss Bank of International Settlements from Basel stole all the savings of honest Americans in 1929 in order to finance the Nazis war industry. It came smooth and invisible, striking hard in a black night. And it says billions lost. Well, nothing was lost. It just ended up in somebody else's pocket. And the fourth horseman is called Death, as the Mason's logo. Together forming the wings of power, coming out of the first horseman of the aristocracy. So the pharaohs became the aristocracy who became the Freemasons and they are ruling the riders of the ap apocalypse are also showing the uh, wings of power where the second being their military wing the Templars, the third knight their financial wing the Swiss banks and the four fourth knight their political wing the Freemasons and those lying politicians as ruling is an extremely tiring job, the kings of the old world order decided finally to delegate ruling into the hands of the new world order of the Masons, also their bloodline, but still keeping power in their own hands. And this is where the Bilderbergers final control is situated. So far only four of the seven seals have been opened. And there are indeed three more wings of control and consequent seals to be opened, which I will open for you now.
and my name Sean is the Irish equivalent for the English name John. The fifth seal holds the wing of power called the media or mainstream to twist our heads with lies and false flags to divide and rule and play people out against each other and who never talk about Switzerland as a rule. The sixth seal holds the six horsemen called religion to play our minds and hearts or heads and feelings to make us turn the other cheek and make us pray only so we don't rise up and do it ourselves is severe blasphemy as we are the instruments of the divine and not the other way around and to play one religion out against another against another one leading to more death destruction chaos and slaughter and the seventh seal is science being the seventh horseman creating companies as Monsanto trying to destroy the creation for more total control by patent patenting nature through criminal copyright or the bees dying because of our own cell phones so Monsanto can take over with these Freemason hermaphrodite plants. It is thus that the beast with seven heads and ten horns means the exact same thing as the seven seals and the uh, and the riders. And this is why the base of all evil and whore of Babylon in the Alps has seven heads of state who divide ten ministries among each other. So this is in the Swiss Parliament and here you can see the color the, the color white of the uh, of the aristocracy as the first uh, the white horse of the of the of the four riders of the ap apocalypse the four horsemen so this is the first horse white and here the second horse red of the templars these are the colors of uh, switzerland actually so this is in the swiss parliament in bern and here you can see there are seven heads of state. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They have seven presidents, which they call a Bundesrat. The seven heads of Octogon who worship Baphomet when sworn in or on other occasions. Also called the Hitler Oath. Well, who was a Swiss agent and financed by the Swiss Nazi Templars in the, in the first place. Hiding some stupid Germanic soldiers whom they were really serving and to what power sworn into by doing the Swiss, Swiss oath. And here is to whom they are all sworn into. And again, the same as the seven heads of state uh, done here by the, uh, the Swiss God of the Pope. Oh, they love doing this, these Swissies. And here again, the Swiss Nazis, they do exactly the same thing as the, uh, the same Hitler oath as in Parliament, as the Swiss God in the Vatican. And the three fingers, of course, are I-H-S, Isis, Horus and Seth, or the Horus Matrix of Baphomet. And here we can see that again, that the Swiss neo-Nazis or skinheads, they give the same Baphomet hand as the, uh, the seven heads of state of the, uh, of the Swiss parliament. And here a Swiss Templar, here, um, in an old painting of 1818, which you can see here. And here it says... Uh, the uh, the brotherhood of the oath you know the old eidgenossenschaft of switzerland so the brotherhood of the oath well the oath you just saw i just showed it to you with the three fingers the hitler oath 
That's the Brotherhood of the Oath. You know? It's a very creepy country here. Extremely creepy. There he is, a Swiss Templar. With Isis. The Whore of Babylon. And some of the Swissies even make tattoos on their breasts of the, uh, the seven heads of the beast. There's only five, because these five, only these five here belong to the uh, SVP Nazi party. Well, there he is again with, this, with the Swiss watch, Templar's cross here, the Swiss cross and the Templar. Well, charming, isn't it? Charming people, really. Well, and as they are so proud of it, here they got the symbol of the uh, the Trojan horse, which is the fifth column of Swiss sleeper agents, like President Eisenhower or the General Eisenhower, uh, J. Edgar Hoover, uh, General Custer, um, and President Herbert Hoover. So they're very very proud of this way of you know infiltrating the world, the Swiss Trojan horse. The Swiss fifth column. And this here is from the Tehran uh, Times in Iran, where the entire Swiss headshed of the SVP Nazi party, who don't even like Muslims, <laughs> they went to Tehran. I wonder if they secretly did the uh, the Baphomet hand in the uh, in their hotel rooms, like uh, here's the Swiss flags. Here's the, you can see there. Well, you can read it here. Yeah. So that was uh, Eastern this year on uh, April 20th. That says April 20th. And the funny thing is, only one week before, I did an interview on the Iranian radio in French. So I wonder. And you know how I talk about this country. So maybe they got invited, like sort of, you know, by the uh, by the Iranians. So here's the entire headshed of the Swiss um, SVP Nazi party. Not just one or two. They're all uh, national councillors, which are like senators. This one is a senator, this one here, and this one. He's, uh, he's making all these uh, posters against Muslims. Well, they, they probably would have li liked it, the Muslims, you know, the Iranians, that they are making these lovely things against Muslims. I wonder what they're, what they're talking about here. Well, it certainly has to do with my, uh, the interview I gave about some, uh, some hidden things uh, about Switzerland. Well, and there they are again, in uh, on a nice Iranian carpet. And um, these are all senators, most important, you know. And they're very influential on the European, in the European Nazi picture. Having a lot of influence and setting up other European peoples against the Muslims and against Islam. So what are they doing in Iran this year in 2014 during Easter holidays? Only one week after my interview on the Iranian radio. Eh? Well, we never hear anything or almost anything about it in the mainstream media. Eh? Well, probably shaking hands with some uh, Iranian president. This one here. This is Mr. Shlua. Very charming blokes. I wonder how much the Iranians valued the Swiss salute. And here you can see the Swiss salute or the Hitler oath in the year 1943 when it was very extremely popular to do so. And it's coming back. And here we can see some more charming Swissies, you know, the, uh, the top of the, uh, the European Nazi movement, you could say, who, ma who proudly made it into the uh, US Daily Mail in 2012.
there. Then you read the whole story, just a bunch of bores. Oh, it doesn't give us the uh, the Hitler oath or the Swiss salute. Well, he's probably doing it here. Can't see the hands here. Charming, isn't it? Yeah, I tell you, there are many of them here. And because uh, Five Star General Eisenhower or Eisenhower was of Swiss descent, he was a fifth column Swiss sleeper agent. So this is why Switzerland never underwent a uh, denazification program as the Germans had to do. Never. It's therefore no wonder that at the ceiling of Swiss Parliament where all these um, occult signs are being given like the Hitler Oath or the Baphomet sign it says this and under the words of Baphomet, his oath is sworn. One for all, all for one. Well, guess who that one is? To whom they're sworn into? Unus pro omnibus, omnen pro uno. Which is also the uh, proverb, one of the proverbs of the Templars whose uh, symbol we can see here, a bit modified, but with the same colours. And the, the colours of the first two horses of the, um, the apocalyptic riders, first white and then red. There you go. In Octagon of the Alps, this is a very popular thing to do, which makes them feel great and powerful, serving their one force. But I tell you, your time is up. For I came to tell you. Crossing many borders illegally without any ID. Because I'm not your slave or property. And I came as a thief in the night. Most of you know Albert Pike, but not many people know that his right hand was a Swiss from Octogon called Phileas Walder. And it was in fact the other way around, and it was in fact Albert Pike who was the right hand of Swiss Phileas Walder from Switzerland, obeying the orders from Octogon, the motherland. Here you can see it. Pike's right hand was Phileas Walder from Switzerland. I'll show you the whole article. It is what I showed you before here. Pike's right hand was Phileas Walder from Switzerland, who was a former Lutheran minister, a Masonic leader, occultist, and spiritualist. And um, well, here's the whole thing. It's about the three world wars made by Octagon, Switzerland. This is the fifth column, folks, from Switzerland, sleeper agents. Extremely dangerous. A menace to the world. I'll put in the link, you can read it all yourself. Thus, for furthermore explaining why old Albert Pike's Ku Klux Klan has a Swiss Templars cross in the logo and the Swiss German definition of the Ku Klux, which I've already explained in some of my other films and don't intend to repeat here. It even says America's Invisible Empire. Why invisible? Well, that's Octogon from the motherland, Switzerland. And they know it. Yeah, this is Swiss, the Swiss flag here in the middle. The white cross on a red underground. And this is like, but the other way around, like the German, the Nazis had on their warplanes and tanks. Only it's the other way around. It's black, but still in the corner here, this, uh, the head is white and here it's black. So, yeah, they know it. This is a badge they're wearing and they know it. This is 
Swiss sleeper agents, the fifth column in America who destroyed the dreams of America. Oh, here's some more of that invisible empire. <laughs> they even say it. I mean, they're so arrogant. You see? And uh, this is why it was not Albert Pike, you know, the, the big man behind, but it was Phileas Valder, the emissary of uh, Octogon. And uh, who stays invisible? Because this is the invisible empire. Albert Pike was just a visible man, you know, to attract more customers like Hitler and all the other visible mans, like a man, like a um, like a public relations officer. You know, the invisible our empire always stayed behind the screens. And this is Swiss uh, Phileas Valder and many more. They, these are the ones who raped America's dreams and they want to create three world wars. Well, we already, already had two of them. So Phileas Valder was one of the many emissaries of the motherland who explored Octagon's hatred, racism and the Swiss fifth column of the worldwide sleeper agents in a very sneaky way, similar to the sneaky Swiss tax evasion crimes and the financing of Adolf Hitler and the Nazi dictatorship, etc, etc. And in the 19th century, the US was still a relatively young country, full of dreams and goodwill. So all these dark energies were not initiated in the US, because there hardly is any US history predating these events, except from the, the Native Americans, of course. So, obviously, these circles came from across the Atlantic, where the first settlers came from, who had been practicing the undermining of entire peoples and countries with secret societies and secret wars, camouflaged by a smile, thus raping humanity's dreams, hope, progress and stability for the sheer lust of power, control and money. Albert Pike lived in the 19th century from 1809 to 1891 and was a Brigadier General during the US Civil War from 1861 till 1865 which was a war between the Confederate slavery state from the South and the pro-abolishment state, states from the Union in the North. The reason of the US Civil War was big money, just as the Second World War, by the way, and also slavery involved by millions of slaves in the concentration camps and around. And we all know who got filthy rich through World War II and the Nazi period. Yes, Switzerland, and it's still the richest and most expensive country in the world. And they got the idea from the Arabs and from Islam, where there still is a huge tradition of using black slaves, whom they call Abd, being the word both for a black man and a slave, as in the word Abdullah, meaning the slave of Allah, for pious Muslims. So here you can see they were in ancient Egypt. That's what I told you. That's why. That's where they got the Templars' treasure from, with which they founded the Swiss banks. And um, here this was in. Here you can see the name Philae as where the, Sw the Swiss name Phileas Valder is referring to, the Swiss Templar, right? So this is why the slave ships were in fact Templar ships owned by the Swiss Templars banks of Octagon, as the Templars founded Switzerland on August the 1st, 1291, two and a half months after the Crusades and founding the Swiss banks with the famous Templar's treasure from the pharaohs in Egypt. So this here was the final desti destination of the Crusades 
and uh, I mean to get back what was theirs in the first place as the Templars are European aristocracy and pharaohs as the, the entire aristocracy are pharaohs so they came to get back what was theirs but it was only one part of the pharaohs and that's why the Templars were persecuted by the rest of them the kings well I explained that in the film Fair Aristocracy and with this they founded the Swiss banks uh, with this money in Octagon yeah, here you can see where the Crusades, they went to exactly where the pharaohs are, were. And um, I'm putting in the links for you. This is what I've been telling you about. And this is why the pro-slavery Ku Klux Klan has a Swiss flag in their logo and a Swiss-German name, which I explained in my other film. And this is why it needed Swiss emissary agents as Phileas Walder and others to defend their big business by wars if necess necessary as the Second World War and the US Civil, Civil War set up by the Swiss and the Octagon Secret Templars organization. There you can see Albert Pike kept some very dark company. Among these individuals were Phileas Walder, a Swiss occultist, well etc. So I'll put it in the links for you. And Pike was the Grand Master of the Order of the Palladium. This is the Palladium of the Templars, the ones who founded Switzerland. Octogon. This is Octogon. And America lost most lives, uh, soldiers, um, through the, um, uh, the US Civil War, actually. I'll put this in the links for you so you can quietly read the uh, the Swiss involvement in it all which is the center of evil I know them An incredible evil humanity will stand a much better chance for peace without these ones here Now, why do you think the southern states were called the Confederates or a Confederacy? Well, because that place in the Alps is called a Confederacy up to this very day. And we can see that date again, 1291, the last of the Crusades and the founding of Switzerland, the Confederacy. You can find a lot of these things on the internet as well. You can buy them. You find them all over Switzerland. Uh, you know, uh, uh, motor motor riders, motorcycle rider clubs. You know, having these sort of things and flags in the streets, just like Phileas Valder was roaming about in the other confederation, the other confederacy. And um, I tell you. These are the ones who brought the U.S. Civil War. And with how many deads, were, uh, dead people was there again? 300 million or so? 300,000 I think it was, wasn't it? These are the ones who did it. And these are the ones behind Albert Pike. And his Satanism and, and all these things, his three world wars. and They are the ones, the fifth column in the United States. It's, this is where they went to first. Now they're all over. You get it? And equally to the JFK murder set up by Octagon and their Swiss sleeper agent J. Edgar Hoover, see my other film about it, the murder of President Lincoln in 1865, short before the end of the Civil War, also was a Swiss operation with their man Albert Pike's involvement and to protect Octagon's big business through slavery, cotton picking, and the clothing industry. Here we can see it. Lincoln's assassin John Wilkes Booth was a member of Pike's Knights of the Golden Circle and the Palladium Order. He was in New Orleans during the winter of 1863-64 and conspired with Pike, Benjamin Sliddle, and Ad Admiral uh, Baird to assassinate Lincoln. And, uh, well, Swiss Philly as well, there was around as well. But they always stay, like, behind, you know. The big ones, they stay behind. 
They did it. Yeah, this is Octagon. They did it. Albert Pike, Phileas Valder. They did it. The Knights Templars who founded Switzerland. They are behind it. What do you really think the Swiss banks could have stolen billions of American dollars? Or maybe trillions? If they wouldn't have any fifth column sleeper agents within the US, you really think so? All these guys with uh, with Swiss names, Bradley Birkenfeld. What kind of an American name is that, Birkenfeld? It's all Swiss. It's all Swiss German. Now wake up and get your country back. And it was not only the Muslims selling the black slaves to the Templar traders, who were by that time of course acting under different names and organizations like the KKK, which is in fact a branch of a lot old organization. But it was also the black African kings who sold their own subjects to the Templars and of course the African kings and the aristocracy are from that very same pharaonic descent as those ones in Europe and the Templars themselves making one of those insider deals. The African kings made some great business in the slave trade and kept their subjects under very bad conditions as cattle waiting for octagons slave trader ships to pass by and pick them up for some good old cotton picking. So please, my black brothers, it's not all of them, all of the whiteys doing this. I mean, the Irish wouldn't do it, would they now? No, never. So the white people too, they have been, we have been the slaves of the, the aristocracy in the Middle Ages and the feudal times, which was like the same thing, you know, going on. And uh, so there are secret organizations who also organize against white people. So my black brothers and the whiteys, let's get together and organize and get the real evil ones who are doing this. Yeah, right? Like Swiss emissary or grey eminence Phileas Valder, who went all over from India to China, Switzerland, the US and France, where he knew Eliphas Levy, another well-known occultist who made that famous Baphomet drawing and whose real name was Alphonse Louis Constant, changing his name into a Jewish name, though he was a Catholic, he was not Jewish at all. So here it says, and there he was a great admirer of Phileas Valder, at whose instance he was he consecrated himself to the demon Antichrist, etc. And here they talk about the existence of the Palladian Order, the Palladian Order of the Templars. Well, I'll show you the whole article here. Uh, this is about devil's worship. I'll put it in the links. It's about devil, devil's worship in France. It's some real dark energies emitting from Switzerland. And they're all over. Oh boy, these people can can keep quiet. They keep silence. Oh boy. If you ask them, everything is clean and neutral and innocent. They never did anything, right? So here it is on Wikipedia. I'm putting in the links for you. This uh, Eliphas uh, Levy, there was a guy who drew drew this one, who made a drawing of the Baphomet of the Templars. Uh, yeah, well, I'll put it in the link. So this is a worldwide conspiracy, all coming out of Switzerland and the Templars, yeah, related to Albert Pike, Phileas Valder, the main man, Eliphas Levy, who was not Jewish at all. Um, yeah. It's worldwide, it's evil, it's Satanist. Um, it, it all relates to Switzerland, really. <laughs> this is where it all from. Well, it says, you know, this, uh, the miraculous levitation of Phileas Valder from an immense distance, this occult personage having become tra transcendently cognizant of what was going forward in China, 
Well, this is real. This goes very deep. And this the the same thing the Nazis did. You know, they went into the occult. Uh, it's it's everywhere the same thing. It's worldwide. It's occult. It's evil, and it's not only. And and they try to you know to get normal people into their things, and and that was that was the the, the task Albert Pike was going to do. You know, to attract other people. But this is the real force behind it from Switzerland. Albert Pike couldn't do these sort of things. Levitate and so this was the real evil behind it. Swiss Phileas Valder and Octagon and the rest of this gang. Alright, it says again in the original text. I'll put in the links for you under the video. All these men were members of the Palladian Order, who were Satanists, believing in Baphomet, the devil, and that from the Swiss Phileas Valder, after three generations, would be born the Antichrist much later in the year 1962. And here we can read it. Here, Phileas Valder, here it says. So Phileas Valder, mortified and maddened, began to curse and swear like the first pope. The experiment disillusioned the assembly and they thoughtfully repaired to the seventh temple which being sacred to fire was equipped with a vast central furnace surmounting a, by a chimney and containing a gigantic figure, figure of uh, Baphomet in spite of the intolerable heat pervading the entire chamber this idol contrived to preserve its outlines and to glow without pulverizing now a ceremony of an impressive nature occurred in this apartment a wild cat well etc etc well they, they, these are some real scary things you know it's not just politics there's a whole different agenda behind it and it comes all out of switzerland it's not it's not just albert pike the man behind in the shade you know that they uh, they are far more dangerous and far more important there's yeah, some more about the palladian initiation and the adventurer uh he calcutta uh, phileas valder he was everywhere so and here's some more you see albert pike and the palladian right here's some more about what albert pike and his swiss pals were into you know yeah, the Palladian right and uh, connected to fascism very Swiss indeed and indeed the Swiss Phileas Valder had a daughter called Sophia who became the high priestess of the Palladian order to which also Albert Pike belonged thus Pike's secret order of the skull and bones of the Arkansas University being a Palladian order and sister lodge of the other skull and bones of Yale. Albert Pike was a lawyer and had been to the university, as so many men born into power become lawyers. So you can read this here. Um, so the reasons for her, her disenchantment with the Palladian centered round another high priest, priestess called Sophia Valda. Nominally the daughter of Phileas Valder, a Protestant minister and high-ranking Freemason, but in reality the issue of a union between Lucifer and Walder's mistress Ida Jacobson. That's the woman they had the disappear. According to a prediction, Sophia would go to Jerusalem, where in the summer of 1896 she would, as a result of a union with the demon Bitru, give birth to a daughter 33 years later, this daughter would also have a daughter by the demon Dicarabia, who after a further 33 years, so in 1962, would give birth to the, <coughs> to the Antichrist. So in these sort of things, these people believe in. I mean, this is, this is Swiss, folks. Yeah. Again, Sophia Valder, uh, Albert Pike. Well, just read it yourself, you know. 
So, if Phileas Valdez's lineage would give birth to the Antichrist, it is only logic to conclude that Philia Valder was the important character here, and all Albert Pike his right hand, just as this very same organization had Adolf Hitler as their man in the lights to attract many followers, as followers follow the one that leads them as their leader, of which the German translation is the Führer. So you can read the whole article here, I'll put it in the links. I just put it in the links, I know. The mother of the high priestess Sophia got especially chosen for that purpose and got rid after the birth. Nobody knows what happened to her. See the same Swiss cross here again, just like the one on the uh, on the Ku Klux Klan. All in all, reminding us of that Frankenstein thing of the Eurovision and the rise of the or resurrection of that phoenix with that Eurovision logo of a diamond saying join us and that fits the square and compass. You see, here you can put the, uh, uh, the compass here, it goes on top here and here is the, uh, the square. That's why it looked familiar to all of us, you see. Well, I'm not sure if I want to join you in this, eh? Phileas Valder was a Swiss Luther Lutheran minister and a priest, and a certain Dr. Bataille describes him as the most disgusting and evil person on earth. Yes, the Swiss always have their dirty little fingers in it. As we can see here, Walder saying they have him Impressive goals, a half million men, primary in the lower Midwest, with the stated purpose of fermenting revolution and the expulsion or death of the abolitionists and free Negroes. All these sort of things. And here, uh, yeah, so, out of this chaos, a new order will rise. This is uh, Pike saying this. Oh, charming, isn't it? And just as this Palladium of the Templars is related to the Order of the Solar Temple, also called OTS in French, where the Solar Temple is in fact the Palladium, and from 1994 to 1997 a wave of ritual murders through Code O2T went through the Order, most of the victims from oh yeah, Switzerland again, but also some in France and Canada with almost a hundred victims and maybe even more, including children, who got all suffocated with a plastic bag for a slow ritual death to lift out the soul, as I explained in another video. Then, after they had a couple of rounds through their skulls and finally incinerated by a flamethrower. You can see the mass murders and suicides. It's in, uh, it's in Wikipedia, so you can read it yourself here about the mass murders oh real charming that's Switzerland and all this is the legacy of the Palladium Order of the Templars and Swiss Phileas Valder these are real wicked things going on and covered up by men on key positions and always Switzerland is involved some everywhere I mean, why do you think the Nazis were so much into the occult, eh? The OTS, even after all those wicked murders, still exists and have their headquarters in Zurich, Switzerland. The concentrated form of evil is sheer unbelievable in Octagon of the Alps, where the Swiss develop incredible high criminal energies beyond all imagination and probably not entirely of this world. And never in all those videos I felt such an evil atmosphere around me, breathing in my neck, as while doing this video here. Last Sunday on March 9th, 2014, I witnessed a very shocking event in a Swiss school, when young Swiss children were forced to perform a satanic ritual for their parents in the audience, in which several Freemason symbols were used as the mason skull and baphomet of the Templars, another name for Satan, the devil. 
And look at the hands here. These, the, the, this was exactly what the young Swiss children did or had to do. And us, they didn't tell us anything about this. Exactly this. The right hand up, the two fingers. I'll show it to you in a minute. Unfortunately, I had only my old mini DV camera with me. Having my HD cam to film the screen afterwards in order to upload. But we can clearly see the skull of death and how the children, the, how the child upholds the right hand with thumb and both index middle fingers stretch out and similarly the left hand down, showing the same hand sign. So this is in a Freemason lodge here and, he, and the skull was in the skull was placed uh, exactly the same way in the same corner of the table and looking out diagon diagonally um, over this corner here. Now you can see a, a bigger picture of this uh, Freemason Lodge and the, th the same things happening in uh, in Swiss schools. I witnessed it last week. Attention, for many people the following footage may be very graphic and disturbing and remember how Switzerland was founded in the last year of the Crusades in 1291 on August the 1st, only two and a half months after the fall of Aachen, the last stronghold of the Templars on May 18th, 1291. The time to get back on horseback in those days. Well, you can see those fingers again. And this is what I witnessed in a Swiss school. And it got worse. This is terrible. And how the Templars were the first banks of Europe, without any doubt founded with the notorious Templars treasure brought into Switzerland from the pyramids in Egypt, with which the notorious Swiss Nazi Templar banks were founded. And maybe under Jerusalem there's a lot of tunnels, maybe there's a big pyramid underneath. Very likely. And this evil still lives in Switzerland in 2014, together with the worship of Baphomet of the Templars, of which I'll show you the disturbing images now. So here we can see the Swiss cross here, here too, these are Templars with the Templar V here, as I, as I told you, here's another V. These are all Swiss Templars, this is the heart of evil. Well, look at this X here, well there's a lot more. So I'll show you the images now. Here we can see the child bringing in the skull here. And here. And the, and the skull doesn't even play one part, uh, one role in the, in the entire story here. In the original story. Not at all. This is my son within the play and they put the skull just in front of his nose where he's sitting later on so for privacy reasons and as it is concerning children I put some tape here over their faces here so here we can see the skull and my son is just sitting here opposite the skull so th this gives me a creepy feeling as we're already under attack and we get a lot of murder threats by the Swiss police and the Swiss Justice Department that they cut off the leg of our, of our cat and we already kidnapped a harder boy 12 years ago whom I never saw again. Well, there it is again within the play and I've noted it's always the diagonal in all those pictures of in Freemason lodges you know it's, it's, it's the same uh, corner where it's looking out and it's always diagonal and my son is sitting just opposite here and uh, so this thing doesn't play no role in the entire play so it has been put here for entirely different reasons I mean this is bad this is real bad there's no talk about the desk call it's just here on the table as in a Freemasonry Lodge. 
So these are the things happening in Switzerland. I wonder how many parents know about this. Or how many parents have they told. So this is part of the play. Uh, les choristes, uh, les enfants de Monsieur Mathieu. They made a, 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 a well-known movie out of it as well. The child was standing for ages with the right hand up, with the middle finger and the index finger up, and the other, the other arm down, like the Baphomet thing, and was just standing there in front of my son, like obstructing his way. So this is the second time. First the skull in front of my son, and now this here. Uh, so these sort of things are happening in the, in the base of evil, Switzerland. So, like this, you were stand, uh, the, she was standing for ages with my son behind. The two fingers up of the right hand and two fingers down of the left hand. As above, so below. Together with the death skull of the Masons. This gesture, this position had nothing to do with the entire play. Nothing, nothing at all. You see, minutes later, still standing like this, taking the Baphomet position. And who she's standing in front of, well, there's only one person, that's my son. Again, first the skull, we're having all these death, these murder threats, and chopping off the food of our cats, and now this here. This is creepy stuff, you know, see it? The arm up and the two fingers standing for ages, like this here. Still in the Baphomet position. And here we can see Madonna doing the same thing here, as it's being done in Switzerland. I tell you, skull and bones, that's the reason why they speak German there, you know, because they are from Octagon, they're on all key positions. And this one is from Octagon as well, that's the origin, it's another Swiss sleeper agent called Madonna. And there it is again. You know, she's doing the uh, the wings here and, and the legs like this, you know, like just like this one here. Just as in the Swiss school, eh? Well, this is Switzerland and it's evil using deception as evil's biggest weapon, like portraying itself as clean, neutral and innocent. Being in fact the very home of Octagon and Baphomet. The child shows the as above, so below, of ancient Egypt and Hermes, or thought. Therefore, it's no wonder that the entire name consists of demotic words giving the true meaning of the word very much in connection with the as above, so below. Ba is the soul when dead, and me, mer, or meru, is the pharaonic word for Pyramid. Therefore, the name should be pronounced without the T at the end. As the early Templars were French, and in French the T at the end is not pronounced, coming to the exact pronunciation in Demotic. Then, in the middle, there is P, meaning to fly or heaven, also related to Pa meaning to arrive. So the middle syllable or heaven and fly indicates the as above, whereas me or pyramid relates to the to the below. 
So, ba, pa, me, or ba, for me, means the soul arrives in the pyramid with one hand pointing into the skies, as in P, and the other down, where the pyramid is indicating the action and voyage of the soul. But when doing so in a secret ritual and together with the skull of death, it represents a huge threat backed up by the oath of the two fingers up, which forms the Freemason oath. So the unmistakably uh, threat here is a double one, with the skull representing the physical death only, and the Baphomet symbol, the metaphysical death by sacrificing one's eternal soul on the altar of the devil. And for me as a father, it literally took my breath away when the skull was placed on the table right in front of my son and the Baphomet gesture was done by someone standing right in front of him, obstructing his way and even a laser light was pointed at him, only at him. And here in the play, so they put the skull in front of him and the Baphomet in front of him and they pointed a laser at my son. So there's three things. So this is my son in the play and he point, they pointed the laser light only on him, only in a few seconds. It lasted only five seconds and he told me too they pointed the laser, the laser light on him. Now why is this? So you can see this laser light again and this is my son with the flashlight behind. The Swiss are an incredible sneaky bunch. You know, and uh, I see here three very strange things. So why do they do this? I mean that that's three too much, three too many. Now what's going on here? Uh, well, these Im images don't lie, you know. My son is 13 years old now, as Osiris had been cut into 13 parts. And a lot of Templars were burned at the stakes on Friday the 13th of October 1307 in France. He is extremely gifted and can remember any number, no matter how long it is and after having only had a quick glance of it and these sort of things he is doing. Together with all the murder threats we're receiving from these Swissies and my other child who got kidnapped 13 years ago, this gets an increasingly creepy situation. The skull does not play any part of the play, neither the real story of Le Choriste, Les Enfants de Monsieur Mathieu, nor in this partic particular performance. So who would put the skull of death in front of these kids with no apparent reason? Who would do such a nasty thing? And then do the Baphomet satanic gesture just like that. I made a video of the, of the entire event, but as I neither have the know-how nor the equipment to edit, edit the short parts, I decided to use still images. Please, someone help. Well, this is Octogon, Switzerland, the heart of evil, where Baphomet, the devil, gets worshipped and its people have a strong and united belief in the forces of darkness. This is the CERN here in Switzerland and they might very well destroy the world as they already did with the financing of wars and their banks and um, I don't know what they are but they're not like the rest of the world. This is something very strange, very different and they're hiding in the Alps they hating everybody and uh, showing all sorts of the immigrants like all sorts of animals and I've, I've never seen such a place as this here. 
somebody do something before they destroy the world. I suppose that 70 or 80 percent of humanity knows that 9-11 was a lie and government set up and anyone who claims not to believe it belongs to the enemy within. I know for sure that the Swiss and the Octagon Nazi Templars did 9-11 through their large fifth column of Swiss sleeper agents inside the US as I've shown to you in my other vids. We all know now that iron melts at 1600 degrees Celsius and kerosene burns at 800 degrees Celsius. So the World Trade Center metal construction couldn't have melted. That building number 7 just dropped all by itself without being hit by anything. That a building conceived to get multiple hits cannot just fall in itself at gravity speed and on spot without collapsing to the side that no United States Air Force fighters scrambled, that September the 11th is the highest sacrificial festivities of the pharaohs called Enkutatach, that on the Richter scales all explosions rigged to the buildings were noticed, but none when the buildings uh, vanished into dust and swirled to the ground. The hole in the Pentagon was far too small to fit an airplane in, no debris was found in the forest where the fourth airplane was supposed to have crashed. No super hard titanium unbreakable airplane engine units were retrieved. And as a miracle, some Arab passports were found intact, supposedly belonging to some fictitious Arabs. So, so far this is all known and, well, we know this, yeah. So, nothing new here. And video footage being showed on TV by the media of an aluminium airplane slamming through the towers high tempered metal and concrete, concrete and coming out intact on the other side. Witnesses disappeared in car accidents and others. Numerous cars spontaneously combusted miles away in a straight line of impulse. All scrap moved away to China overnight without forensic examinations. And on impact, half of the airplane, in fact, would have ricocheted and jumped off the walls of the towers into the opposite direction, etc., etc. So, here, so far, nothing new, actually. But what most people don't even know is that an airliner could not even fly the elite's velocity at that altitude because of the air density 
at 400 meters sea level of 1.2 kilograms uh, per cubic meter. Not even the power of the engines would be strong enough to thrust an airliner against that wall of air resistance, also called drag, and obtaining the 900 kilometers an hour or 560 miles per hour we see on TV. Impossible! And even if the engines were strong enough, which they aren't, the airplane would shake itself apart because of the flutter, which is in fact always, it always happens with engine failure at high altitude. So when that plane hits the drag at lower altitude when falling down, thus retrieving parts tens of miles apart, when wings, tails and engines falling off, breaking into hundreds of parts, like being hit by a concrete wall of one kilogram per um, cubic meters of massive air density resistance of an airplane designed to cruise 900 kilometers an hour only at high altitude of uh, 3,500 meters or 10,000 feet in thin air where density is practically zero of 0 0.008 kilograms per cubic meters. So here's some very interesting tables here and you can see like at 400 meters between 0 and 1000 meters it's, a, it's more than 1 kilo, kilograms per cubic meters and uh, up in the air like here where it's uh, minus 36 degrees Celsius it's um, it's nothing it's zero and these things um, I mean they're, they're very important you know to know so it was impossible the airplanes you saw and of course it fluctuates when the um, depending on the um, on the temperature as well and this here on Wikipedia is about the density of the air and where the, the airplane is conceived to fly, you know, at uh, like uh, 3,000 meters, I think it was, 10,000 feet, the, uh, the air is very thin and it's only here it can go maximum speed, which it can't at, at 400 meters, it's absolutely impossible, it's a joke really. Here's some more about the aircraft performance. It can only perform high speed at a high level, at high altitude. There's some more tables, um, you know, density, altitude. It, it's thin air up there, you know, and not at 400 meters, the, uh, the height of the towers. I'll put in the links for you. It's too much to put it all here. So this is about the cruise speed of an airliner here which can only be attained in thin air as we can see here at high altitude and not at 400 meters. So to me the, uh, the aircraft's aerodynamics is for me really the biggest proof that 9-11 was a lie, a, a hoax, a, um, a, a, an inside job, uh, a complete lie. <laughs> there were no airplanes, it's not possible. But this is about the airspeed, it says, so the speed of an aircraft relative to the air. It is because of the drag, the air density, the, uh, the, um, the flutter. You can't just fly with an airplane like you want, you know, or uh, it's impossible. There are certain laws of physics. This here is called the flight envelope. It also has to do with the aerodynamics. Top speed you see here. Due to the air resistance, the density which is uh, dependent on the air density and the air resistance. So that's the drag, and on the other side is the thrust of the engines. About the approach so the like the landing speed or at 400 meters like the World Trade Center uh, uh, these airplanes could have done like uh, 250 kilometers max
no more. Would have fallen apart, would have shaken apart. This physical law in aerodynamics is called the uh, the coffin corner, which is actually here before you fall down. Uh, so you just read it yourself. This is the drag, sometimes called air resistance, which is uh, dependent on the air density and how many kilograms per cubic meters. So the uh, <laughs> You know, at 400 meters, well, you know, it's like a concrete wall. An airplane can't fly that fast, of, of that size. It can't. It's impossible. So the, this, this is really the biggest uh, proof. It's all a lie. So this here is about the material. Here we can see flutter because of the vibrations, about, uh, because of hitting, uh, because of the drag and hitting. Uh, from thin air, thin air, the uh, at lower altitude, the thicker air. So the wings they start to vibrate, which is called flutter, and it's 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 fluttering more and more and more until they break off. They simply break off. Yeah. So this here is about the flutter here. Well, read it yourself. We would never have seen an airplane at that altitude hit a uh, the wall uh, the world trade center towers it would it would have fallen off before long 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 before it's impossible it's it's a total lie well we all know it's a lie but i think i, I just wanted to repeat it for you other people have done uh, a lot of um investigations uh but i think this is the um this is it we can all see it we can all you know what, what, what more to say? So this is what really would have happened with the uh, at that speed at that altitude, you know. It's it's saying goodbye, bye bye, you know. And if you're sitting in there, the only thing you can do is like, like bend on your knees, on on your on your knees and pray. And put your head really deep between your knees. And kiss your ass goodbye. Oh, that's all, you know. Just pray on your knees and put your head between your knees and kiss your ass goodbye. You see how it's shaking? Well, this is because of the drag. This, this is what happens, you know. No airplane could have, no airliner could have hit the towers. It's not possible. It's saying goodbye, you see. Bye bye. <laughs> It's all a lie. We know it's a lie, but I think this is really the evidence. Because we know what an airplane does, etc. So what we all saw on TV were no airplanes who would have literally be, been disintegrated before our eyes, before even coming near to any towers because of the drag and flutter. I guess it's kind of hard to shut to slow down a missile right only a small aerodynamically conceived uh, jet fighter with its wings in a smaller angle cutting through the tons of air density resistance and drag can fly at high speed low altitude where those presumed airliners can do uh, 250 kilometers an hour max so disintegrating airplanes it really happens and if it happens high enough, well, you never find a single piece in anymore. Never again. Especially if it's over the ocean, you know. I remember in the army we had to learn these air density drag tables because of the halo jumps we did and the consequence of a too low opening concerning the wall of air density banging into. And especially when it's hot uh, and a high H2O percentage in the air, like in coastal areas on that nice Indian summer's day of September the 11th, you really can feel the different air layers falling through. So here's some more about the halo. I'm putting a link for you. Yeah. What they really were, I don't know. But they cannot have been airplanes of that type. And any pilot or aeronautics engineer can tell you that for sure. 
So anyone w who will tell you that 9-11 was no conspiracy false flag is either very stupid and if he or she is not stupid then they belong to the pharaohs and enemy within. As simple as that. And only Octagon of the Alps and the Nazi Templars are capable of organizing a false flag as 9-11, both technically, organization-wise, total lack of conscience, with total laws of silence, nothing leaking out, and with that incredible financial support of the Swiss Nazi Templar banks, in conjunction with those worldwide Swiss mercenaries like Blackwater, Schwarzwasser. Just look at this shift towards Nazism the Americas went through after 1945 when the Swiss Red Cross got at least 100,000 Nazi war criminals through that Nazi red line over the Atlantic, not forgetting the paperclip operation by the Swiss Eisenhower getting them inside the US, having all their men on US and South American soil on all key positions killing Kennedy, South American juntas and states terror assassinations in Argentina, Chile and the rest after they financed Adolf Hitler, set up World War II, pillaged Europe and abandoned Germany and the Germans in rubbles and now working on World War III against Islam through the Swiss 9-11 false flag already announced by Albert Pike taking orders from the Swiss Phileas Walder. Only Octogon is capable of a 9-11 ops and they did it all right. The Nazi Templars struck again. Switzerland founded in 1291 in the last year of the Crusades two and a half months after that by the Templars. You should all know by now that when the media and authority scumbags try to lay fear in our hearts then something is terribly wrong. And this is exactly what's happening now considering the Islamic Jihad of the new ISIS group. Whereas we should be more afraid for our children with the Zurich Gay Pride being held in Switzerland, the motherland of all evil, this weekend right after the Templars, Friday the 13th of June 2014. And as we know, those Templar boys were as queer as a broomstick too. So you see that the date has been carefully chosen with that of sodomy conveniently converging with those other boys of sodomy's holy date of Friday the 13th. There are far more bigger dangers such as Fukushima's radioactivity hitting the US west coast or the dying of the bees because of our cell phone addiction than some Arabs in the sand with some BDWs BDWs that's the uh, army slang for a personal defense weapon whom can be easily dealt with by a few Apache runs with miniguns taking out the first and last car first of that line of cars in order to block and trap them and then slowly picking out the rest in between and terminate them in an easy afternoon. Go on, these easy ISIS guys don't even have the material the Germans had in the First World War. And whose biggest weapon is supposed to be some invisible entity up in the skies who never shows up anyway. I mean, this is not a military threat. This is just a civilian threat. But far from being a military threat, this is nothing. And for those who don't want to believe the lies of the media anymore, our masters of Octogon have an alternative version ready to fill in the gaps by Swiss sleeper agents like this guy here, who never criticizes the motherland and other, conf and other confederacy. Not even when the Nazi banks steal trillions of US dollars and who pleaded guilty of conspiracy against the USA in front of a US court of justice. And this so-called conspiracy theorist doesn't seem bothered at all by hearing proofs of that very word, conspiracy. 
Apparently, when the globalists, the globalists, the globalists are from the Confederacy in the Alps, then it's time to silence up for the Confederates and their main spokesman. Well, here's the Swiss cross, you see, and the, uh, the KKK. Criminals are cowards. They want you disarmed. And Obama is a criminal. The globalists are criminals. They've disarmed everybody else but the Swiss and us. So there's the date. It was June the 11th, 2014. He likes octagon. This is a fifth column. And Alex Jones's pillmaker is a Freemason of the ancient Kappa Sigma Lodge from Italy's Middle Ages, sending me this letter here, saying that it was Alex's idea to put the Swiss flag on his bottles. Yeah, so there's the website here, Dr. Group. Well, here it says Kappa Sigma fraternity member. There it is. Freemason. Well, there it is. Kappa Sigma. Freemasons. Here's their, their logo. Five stars here. The half moon, the crescent moon of the um, of the Shriners. There's some Egyptian stuff here. This is Ma'at, the wings of Ma'at. Uh, typically, yeah. So you can read all about it. I'll put in the links, of course. So this is the uh, Alex Jones's pill maker, the Mason. Look here, the skull of death, and some swords here, and I don't know what. The star and the crescent. Well, so this is Doctor Group, with whom Mr. Jones is affiliated. Well, I know enough when I see this. And this is what they wrote back on my uh, on my question. Um, it's Alex Jones version and private label with the Swiss flag. I'm not sure why he uses that. It's by no means a choice we suggested or made for him. Our version of this product can be found here. So they don't have it on it. So, um, well, I suppose this guy he doesn't doesn't know. He's just working there. He's not initiated. First, our masters make us sick, and then they themselves come with the solution to make us dependent on them, just as Monsanto wants, so we can only buy their seeds. Dr. Edward Group and Alex Jones's Freemason pillmaker is ex military. More well, charming setup, isn't it? And not many people know that the main symbol of the Masons is a direct reference to where they come from and their pharaonic origins, as the compass has a 60 degrees angle for the pyramid sides and the square a 90 degrees angle for the pyramid square base. With this you can draw a pyramid. No real Muslim would give that name Isis, as Isis refers to the pharaohs, who are the evil ones in the Quran, just as they are in the Bible. No jihadist would identify himself with Isis and the pharaohs, and the name is an invention of the media, of those pharaonic Gulf oil barons of Saudi Arabia and Arab Emirates as Dubai, Qatar and Kuwait, who even have shopping malls with pyramids and obelisks, as you can see here in Dubai who chose the name Isis because of the Horus Matrix, because the whore of Babylon hates the Muslim patriarchy, and she wants to rule together with Seth or Sethon, in short, in short, Isis and Sethon or Satan decided to murder her husband Osiris, being pregnant with his child Horus, in order to reshape man, not in the image of God, but as her obedient, stupid servant, and therefore the boy had to be circumcised as an alliance with Sethon, the devil, to mutilate the body and God's creation. Funny enough, Muslims are forbidden to
to tattoo themselves as a tattoo transforms the body and God's creation. So apparently these are the backs of some uh, ISIS fighters with the with the pyramid and the the unk of life on their on their backs. So these can't be Muslims. A Muslim wouldn't put these pharaonic tattoos, and he wouldn't put a tattoo at all at his body. Well, they look pretty dead here. So it's all a hoax, you know. It's it's another false flag for the Horus Matrix. Muslims traditionally only trust family members and the tribe, as their entire society is full of deception, lies and corruption, which are sins within the Christian culture. But therefore, no Muslim trusts the government, as they are used to the lies of 1001 Nights, and they would never massively go to war for the Horus Matrix and die for king and country, which those stupid whiteies massively did in two world wars. And therefore, to execute the Horus Matrix for the New World Order and total control over a stupid, all-believing mankind and farmed race, another solution had to be found for Muslims, who accept only one authority, and are very superstitious, but still in the name of ISIS, as in Islamic State of Iraq and Sham. And Sham is the Arabic name for Syria, probably referring to Sam as in Semites. And with ISIS, her goal of killing patriarchy, similar to what has happened in the West by using the Horus Matrix, the never-ending story of divide and rule had to be inserted by using false flags by octagon Templars as the SAS dressed up as Sunni, Sunni Muslims doing massacres on Shia Muslims and Alavis or, or Alevites and vice versa, the other way around, to create a civil war, man killing man for Isis and her sisters installing the reign of Seth on, just as du during the 30 year war between Protestants and Catholics and Octogon's mercenaries murdering and replacing the Germans for Pharaoh's motherland in the Alps called Sœur d'Isis, uh, Schwitz, Schwester de Isis, Schwitz, or Switzerland, the Sisters of Isis. Here you can see some, some other false flag agents here, dressing up as Muslims, killing, you know, to, to have this civil war going on of the SAS. Well, they're probably um, Swiss mercenaries or the descendants of the Swiss mercenaries. And, uh, well, you can read, I, I'll put it in the link for you. This is what they're doing. And we could already see how Muslims are hard to kill in the Horus Matrix, when in the first Gulf War they all surrendered with their hands in the air, and the second Gulf War all deserted, vanished, vanished and hid where those stupid all-believing whiteys would have held positions and would have all died in the Horus Matrix, as I explained in my video filmed at the U.S. Cemetery of Omaha Beach. Or should we say Omaha Bitch, the Isis Bitch and Whore of Babylon with a statue holding Horus the Falcon God and the Omaha graveyard itself symbolizing her victory over the patriarchy. So my dear Muslim brothers, don't kill each other in this new world order, Saudi King Abdullah, Shia Sunni war. This was also one of the very reasons for murdering the Jews in the war, as most of them refused to carry arms and serve in the military as their religion forbids killing. The sisters of Isis from Octogon couldn't crush the Hebrew, Hebrew patriarchy through the Horus Matrix. So they had to find another solution, the final solution. And even today, the Orthodox refused to serve in the Israeli army, just as the rabbis promised the Jews that God would protect them against Hitler. So no Jew defended themselves, and they just prayed in vain. So this is why Israel became a secular state that acts first and then prays instead of the other way around. And just as this time ISIS 
had it well prepared and camouflaged, even having camp inmates to send postcards back home of how good camp life was, so no one resisted transportation. And this code of silence and sly deception mode is so typically Swiss, where the sisters of Isis are no females but she-males who had the good women of Europe burn at the stakes by the Pope's Swiss guard because these good women refused their men to die in the horrors matrix, which in fact happened later on. And just as Hitler's Mein Kampf prepared the people's minds for their coming actions, a Swiss book called the Maleus Maleficarum, or Witch's Hammer, laid the foundations of the massacres to come and the killing of the good women of Europe. And similar, the witches later on were the Jews, and now the witches are the Muslims. Come on, wake up, folks. Mein Kampf was written by the Swiss, who also finance him just as the, as the manual of witch killing was a Swiss book by Heinrich Kramer and Jacobus Springer. So now Isis, the she-male Omaha bitch, wants to wipe out the pre-Islam patriarchy of those tribal desert communi communities by having those who believe in the Prophet's companies, companions, also called Sunni, fight those who believe in Muhammad's bloodline, also called Shia and Alawite. Notice that even Prince Charles is related to the Muslim prophet by one of his descendants having offspring with the Spanish Per A, or Royal House of Aragon and Castilla, who later mix with the Windsor, better known as Windsor, as the, uh, the word Sar, it means the king in the Pharaonic language, just as in a sarcophagus, which is a box to put the king in when he's dead. Well, watch the Pharaoh show, it's all in there. So Windsor, it actually means Windsar, as in Sar, the king of Rome. It also means Son Altesse Royale, his, high royne, his, his royal highness, and the Tsars, it's all pharaonic. So here, it says here, a connection from Mohammed entering the British line through Infanta Isabella of Castilla has endorsed, well, so that they are in Sevilla, Sevilla, Sevilla. They are they 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 are all connected, they're all in the same bloodline. The uh, the prophet of the Muslims, together with the uh, with with the European aristocracy. And we, and we have to fight for that. Oh, Wikipedia royal intermarriage. Well, look at this one here. Just punch pause. There's an interesting one here. How they mix with the Muslim world. Al-Andalus. From the time of the Umayyad conquest of uh, Hispania, that's Spain, and throughout the Reconquista, Spanish royals married Muslim Umayyad princesses to seal trade treaties between Christian kings and Muslim caliphs through these marriages, such as that of Alfonso VI of Lyon and Castilla, it is believed that most European royalty can trace their ancestry back to the family of the Prophet Muhammad through his this remains, though this remains controversial. It's, a, they're all real, it's all one satanic bloodline it is. They are the pharaohs. And we have to die for it in the next war coming up. Well, forget it. In breeding. They are our masters. They're all the same. We're all brainwashed by all these books. And it is the Horus Matrix. The Omaha bitch and the she -males having an alliance with Sethon or Satan. And the Royal Mint of uh, England or Great Britain of that very same aristocracy are preparing the Isis coins 
for us in conjunction with the ISIS Jihad, all in the name of that Omaha bitch and her shemales. It's, the, the proofs are overwhelming, folks. It's overwhelming. It's, it's all right in our faces. Just as the uh, all the uh, the pop star showing it, they they just have to show it, like the the horned hand and the the satanic ritual and and the all seeing eye. <laughs> it's the same. And everything was happening in the Middle East, Asia, and Africa has already occurred with the peoples of Europe. The genocide on the Celts and the Horus Matrix on the Germanic and Slavic tribes. And history repeats itself as history gets made by the same repeated conception of the Isis, Octagon and the Horus Matrix behind. Similar to the Russians exfilling Afghanistan and creating a civil war afterwards by the Taliban. When the Americans pulled out of Iraq, the gap leaves a civil war by the ISIS. Or when the Romans pulled out of Europe, five centuries of dark ages followed. These are the tactics of Sethon, for which I'm here to teach you. Here in Europe last night, most TV channels showed a live broadcast of a traditional huge event since 1956 called the Eurovision Song Contest where they had this creature stuffed in a woman's dress with female makeup and a heavy black beard which called itself Conchita Wurst meaning the win the finals with a song called The Rise of the Phoenix and the phoenix is the symbol for a future resurrection after death. Probably the resurrection of the abominable. One also referred to as the Lord of Darkness and the flapping of his wings can almost be heard already. It came from Austria, winning for Austria. And I wonder if the people of Austria has been done a favor by winning. I guess most normal Austrians would rather have Austria lose as being represented by this thing in female clothes and a beard. Everything is upside down. Doctors make us sick. Banks steal our money. Cops beat us up instead of defending the population. And undefinable creatures with heavy black beards and dress up in women's clothes get praised and worshipped. Its Austrian name Wurst means a sausage in German and Conchita is Spanish slang for little cunt coming from the word concha. Giving altogether little cunt sausage a very carefully chosen name which makes the whole thing even more perverted. But that's not all. It even goes deeper still. Conchita also means conception and a name given to Christian daughters in Latin America and Spanish speaking countries as referring to Maria and uh, Mary and the Immaculate Conception thus precisely joining into the satanic agenda and not just only the homo agenda, all in all adding up to the joy of Barry and Michael and their community. And in spite of the fact that these agitators claim equality, they openly discriminate Christians by deliberately misusing the name of the Holy Virgin Mary, one of the main pillars of their religion, and place her on the altar, altar of the abominable through this highly satanic ritual while falsely preaching respect and peace. And while this creature with a beard in woman's clothes openly claims in the media, we are unstoppable. 
as an open declaration of war to anyone whom it concerns. And it asked, immediately after the show, if President Putin had already seen the monster show of the Eurovision Song Contest. Well, this is a weapon of mass destruction. And in spite of the fact that they cannot reproduce themselves, it appears to be that there are more and more of them, gays and lesbians. Why? I've come to the conclusion after many years of scientific research that in the case of a perfectly healthy normal woman after extensive hormon hormonal consumption without interruption of the female anti-baby pill, hormones are being deposited in the reproductive organs and even directly pump in the later planned baby with pregnancy dissimulating hormones as oestrogen and gestagen, making it quite obvious that boys filled up with female hormones will feel sexually rather attracted towards other men. A lifelong search for the stolen masculinity. This only the devil and his own true people can think of. And in utterly witty mood, the anti-conception pill's father, Carl Gerasi, apparently said to his insider colleagues in and around the laboratory in 1951, double action birth control. Well, now we have in our possession a birth control with a double function, thus not being a weapon solely against man or males, as the inventor states out, but a weapon against entire peoples, women and children included. And today there's even talk of a triple action because of the excess on feminine matters or too much yin element, male aspects as the sperms are quickly disappearing. Already one couple out of a hundred has to be helped with artificial insemination. Through the sewers we even find pathological amounts of these female hormones back into our food chain. They knew it and they wanted it, it like this until a time will come where we have to fill in a triple form to apply for a baby with the state's official parenthood permit plus a waiting list of 10 years at the sperm banks of the pharaohs with of course their own genetics only. Well, this is what the newspapers say about the bearded, bearded lady who won the, uh, the Eurovision Song Contest. Uh, there's some pictures and all that. Okay. And here's some more in the newspapers and they write about it as if it were the most normal thing in the world. A bearded lady. Well, these are the same mainstream media who lied about 9-11. Who want us to believe that, eh? Don't they now? And if they can lie about 9-11, well, they'll lie about everything. <laughs> So here it is in Wikipedia. See, it started in 1956, the inauguration. Oh, right, look, now it gets interesting. Look at this. You can look it up yourself. Look. The first contest was held in the town of Lugano in Switzerland in 1956, the host nation. And the European Broadcasting Union, based in Switzerland, Octogon, the home of the seven, the beast with the seven heads of the Lord of Darkness. It's always from here. You see? Well, look it up yourself, you know. Just punch pause. It's from Switzerland. It's everything. Geneva and, you know. Oh, 
Okay, here's some Spanish lessons. Conchita. Well, it means the little cunt. Slang. And don't you tell me they didn't know this. Oh no. Come on. So Conchita is diminutive for concha and here it says what it means it, it it says what it means, yeah? La concha de tu madre. No. This is real filthy language. Together with Wurst the sausage, which is not really its its real name or whatever it is. Well here's some more about the name Conchita. Well here it says it's a um it's a name to honor the immaculate immaculate conception and the virgin mary so it's it's not only filth the whole show in this conchita worst thing but it's pure hate and it's disrespect and hate hatred towards others who think differently and it's uh, so the entire eurovision show from switzerland and this conchita thing is a uh, is a precisely chosen insult towards uh, Christianity and Christians. They've been thinking a long time about this, you know, and uh, con Conchita uh, Wurst, you know, the little cunt, and and uh, combining the little cunt together with the uh, the Virgin Mary. Well, they know exactly what they're doing. Well, this is the, uh, the Freemason agenda of the uh, Hermaphrodites and uh, these forces who want to destroy the creation. Oh, the whole Conchita thing reminds me of this guy and even looks alike of one of the... Uh, the characters this guy here played called um, Bruno, also from Austria, and looks very much alike. I always like to look at the uh, where people come from, you know, and their their early life, so you can read it as yourself here. Uh, Maurice Cohen and um, Cohen Israel. That's quite interesting. So I, I, I really don't want to show all these uh, all these pictures of Bruno and, and uh, or Bruno and, and well there he is you know but um, a gay from Austria just as this Conchita thing you know and uh, so I just do it quick here so this is Wikipedia just punch boss. And there he is, the inventor of the pill, Mr. Carl Gerasi. Funny name. There, there's his name. Who, uh, who brought this misery to the world, actually. Of so many children who got born, even they had their lives destroyed, even before they were born. With all those hormones because of this pill. Yeah. Well, just punch pause, read it yourself. It has all been worked out, see. Well, some background information about Carl Gerasi. Apparently the guy's also from Austria, just as Bruno, just as Conchita, Wurst. And where is his ancestry from, like the early life here. Both parents were Jewish. Alice Friedman. Uh, to America, Wisconsin, and um, wow, gave us the pill and all the misery that came with it, including last night's pervert show. And I think it's due to the pill, yeah? So women, don't take it, please, because, and a lot of women get very aggressive of it, masculine, you know? Walking around with a cold and a sheriff's uniform and they're not female anymore, you know. Well, what else can you expect with all those female hormones? And you know, when you're taking too many female hormones, um, the body, there, there's a masculine uh, reaction to it, you know. 
it's the same with uh, bodybuilders taking too much, uh, too many um, uh, hormones, you know, to mask um, um, testosterone uh, hormones, you know, to be male, you know, male growing hormones. <laughs> they grow titties, you know, <laughs> and with women it's the other way around. And when thinking about the children who suck it all up like for 10 years, you know, it, it, it's everywhere, you know. <laughs> they will be looking for the lost and stolen masculinity by Mr. Carl Gerasi for the rest of their lives. Well, I hope you enjoyed the monster show then. <laughs>